going to go ahead and get started here. I'm just pulling up my PowerPoint that we'll use for this evening, and then I will screen share it with you all so that you can see it. And then if you didn't see our chat box, um, the chat button is on the very bottom. If you haven't done Zoom before or are still getting familiar with it, um, you'll see it on the very bottom. You can click that. It'll open a box and you'll be able to see other people's comments or questions and you can type in questions there as well. Um, and I will do my best to answer those. I have some people watching it for me. So, so we know if there's a question inputted there. This is always so tricky with Zoom. I'm sure you guys are testing out Zoom and other venues too. And um, it's a little different. There's not as much interaction as when we're in person. So we'll just kind of go with the flow tonight. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and just introduce, introduce myself here. My name's Christina Bond. Um, I'm one of the physical therapists here at M3. I've been here since January. Um, so when I started, it was nice and lovely and everything was normal. And then COVID hit in March and we got a little crazy. Um, so for those of you who haven't been into the clinic um, at all yet, some of you may be past patients, some of you may be um, thinking about potentially starting therapy but are unsure. So I just kind of wanted off the bat to talk a little bit about what we're doing in the clinic as far as precautions for COVID. Um, we are seeing patients as usual here in the clinic. Typically, you won't see my face, so you get to see it over Zoom, but um, we have masks on all the time and gloves as well for all patients. And then I don't usually wear a lab coat, but we wear lab coats now and we leave them here and wash them in the clinic. So we're doing everything we can to really keep things clean, sanitize, keep patients away from each other. We have some treatment rooms that we put patients in. We do have a gym area, but we try and keep only one to two people in there at a time and spaced out. So I just wanted to say that off the bat because some of you I know may be thinking, oh, I wanna do therapy, but I don't really wanna come into the clinic and that sort of thing. So um, any questions at all about that, feel free to um, put it in the chat box or interrupt me and let me know. Okay, so just a little bit more about myself. Um, I've been, out working for about three years now. Some of you may have seen this little um, fill in the blank that Amanda sent with our email here. Um, you don't have to do this, but if you're someone who enjoys doing puzzles or fill in the blank, you can follow along here with the listening guide. So I'll give away the first question. That's the first question. How long have I been um, practicing? So I've been out three years. Um, when I started, I went to school in Alabama and I I started um, working there for a year at a small outpatient clinic similar to M3 here. Um, and I worked with a shoulder specialist there who had been working for about 30 years. So really everything that I know about shoulders pretty much comes from her and her experience that she taught me. Um, we worked with a nationally renowned shoulder surgeon there um, who was great. Um, so we saw a lot of post-operative patients as well as patients who were trying to avoid surgery and that sort of thing. So um, I got to see a lot of variety of patients there. Um, and I got um, what I would call an instinct too of being able to decipher whether a patient will improve from therapy um, pretty quickly off the bat or um, how they will progress if they have had surgery, how quickly or slowly they will progress. Um, just because we saw probably 90% of our patients were shoulder patients. So I really enjoy treating the shoulder. It's a complicated joint, um, but it's one of my favorite areas to treat. So as we go tonight, I'm going to kind of give an overview of the shoulder and how it works. And then my assistant, Brett, here, I'm going to come in the screen and say hi. <laughs> this is Brett. Hey, everyone. <laughs> He's going to help me out um, with some exercise and some demonstration as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started here. You will probably also receive an exercise handout by email as well. So we'll do that a little bit later. Um, that's kind of more for your reference than anything else. Okay, so I'm gonna screen share here. Okay, can you guys see my PowerPoint? 
thumbs up if you can see my PowerPoint. Awesome. Okay. I'm just going to scroll here. I think that'll be easier. Okay, so let's start off with just some really basic shoulder anatomy. We're not really going to get into this a ton, but I want to give you a, a picture and a reference of what the shoulder looks like and how it functions. So this is our bony anatomy here. And I'm going to show you with my mouse. So this is the humerus bone of the arm. And at the top, you see a ball. That's what we call a ball and socket joint. So the ball is connected to the humerus of the arm here. And then your scapula in the back, also known as your shoulder blade, that's what creates the cavity for that so or socket for the ball. So that's a really important description for us as PTs. For you, basically what that means is the shoulder has a lot of motion. It has a lot of mobility. It moves up and down and all around. It's one of the most mobile joints that we have in the body. And it's because of this ball and socket here. Um, so that, that'll come into play a little bit later as we talk more about the muscle structure as well. Okay, so let's move to the ligaments. So we have the bones, we have that ball and socket joint, and then also surrounding the joint, we have a ligamentous structure. So we're not gonna get into all of these ligaments here, but in case you're interested in it, I've numbered or lettered um, which ligament goes where. So basically these ligaments surround the joint and hold it in nice and tight. But the most important thing that I wanna point out is this labrum here. So some of you may have heard of the labrum or, or know what it is or have had a tear. So the labrum is basically like a suction cup. It suctions that ball into the socket and holds it in really nice and tight. So when you have a tear in that labrum, it causes a lot of what we call instability or movement of that ball in the socket, which causes pain when reaching overhead or when reaching out for, for something. Um, that labrum is really, really important. And oftentimes we see labral tears that go along with other tears like rotator cuff tears or bicep tears too. Okay, so those are the ligaments. And then moving into some of the muscles on the front of your body. So if you're facing the camera and I'm looking at your shoulder here, we're talking about those muscles right in the front. So um, I, I highlighted here the rotator cuff muscles because those are pretty common ones that people wanna know, you know, where are those, what do they do? Um, because they're often torn and often muscles that we're talking about in physical therapy. So the first one I wanna highlight here is the subscapularis. So that's a muscle right here in the front, kind of goes over the pectoral muscles, the front of the arm. So that's one of your rotator cuff muscles and we'll talk a little bit more about that, what that does and we'll demonstrate it for you. Um, the supraspinatus is another one that comes more here onto the side of the arm. So that helps with lifting the arm out to the side. There are lots of other muscles going on in here, but I just wanted to also point out the bicep muscle. It has two tendons. So one that goes into the joint space itself, into that ball and socket, and then um, one that comes up here and connects to part of the shoulder blade. So people get tears in one or both of those bicep tendons, and that's really your, your lifting muscle if you're carrying a heavy box or that kind of thing. But that's not one of the rotator cuff muscles. Um, okay, so moving on to the muscles more posterior, so in the back, which are really, really important muscles for posture, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So there are two rotator cuff muscles also in the back of the shoulder, the infraspinatus and the teres minor. So those, I'll demonstrate again what those do a little bit later, but they're very, very small muscles, um, but they are important. They're important to help be able to move the arm up and down overhead and in and out. You also have your rhomboid muscles, which are really important for posture. Those are the ones that help you squeeze the shoulder blades together. The upper trap is another one I want to highlight here. I didn't bold it, but the upper trap is this big, giant, broad muscle that you see here. So we have an upper portion that goes all the way up into the neck. We have a middle portion across the back here and a lower portion that goes down the spine. And that big giant broad muscle is one of the strongest muscles in our body. It really likes to take over for the shoulder. So when the shoulder is having pain, 
what happens is that upper trap decides that it's going to work for the shoulder instead of all those small rotator cuff muscles. So it tries to give those muscles a break, but it actually does more harm. It causes a lot of neck pain. It can cause headaches too, refers pain um, into the head region. So that's a really big problem area. So what you can do, if you're sitting here in your chair right now, I can't see all of you, but what I want you to do is sit up nice and tall and lift the arms up overhead and back down. So when you feel your arms lift up, what you should feel is nice smooth movement, no pain, and also you should feel like your shoulders are staying down, like they're not creeping up towards your ears. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit when I stop the screen share. Um, but when our shoulders come up to our ears like we're shrugging, that's that big upper trap muscle that's taking over. So sometimes when you're having shoulder pain and you go to lift that arm, you might notice that you're shrugging the shoulder a little bit. And that's just that upper trap muscle saying, I'm going to take over for your shoulder because it's, it's in pain right now. Okay, so let me stop the screen share and then we'll do a little bit of demonstration of these muscles here. Yes. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Stop share. Sorry, I'm I'm new at being host on Zoom. I'm usually the one on your end doing Zoom classes. Okay. Um, so if you want to take a seat in that chair, Brett's going to take a seat in the chair. I'm just going to tilt this. Yes. Yeah, you can face the camera here. Okay. So if Brett came into the clinic and he was having shoulder pain, I would want to ask him the same question I asked you. Go ahead and sit up tall in the chair. Mm -hmm. And I want you to lift both arms up overhead as high as you can. Good. And back down. And then I would ask him if he has any pain. He, he doesn't have any shoulder pain. You don't have pain, do you? Okay. But you may notice that you do have some pain. So I would want to know, where are you feeling that pain? Now, for a lot of people, they're feeling the pain right at the top. And it's in this, this area here. We call it, you know, 60 to 120 degrees. So if this is 180 degrees up here, and this is 90 here and zero here, so from about 60 degrees to about 120 degrees is where most people get pain. That's what we call a painful arc. And that pain is going to be right at the top of the shoulder. So that means that the shoulder isn't moving like it's supposed to. When the shoulder moves, it's the ball in the socket. And that ball is supposed to roll down and the arm lifts itself up. But what happens with that painful arc is that the ball isn't rolling. What it's doing is sliding. It's just sliding up and pinching the very top here of the shoulder. I'm going to have you scoot a little closer, actually. There we go. Um, maybe not quite that far. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm going to lower this down just a little bit. Okay, so what I would do after that is I want to test his muscles and see how strong he is. So I'm going to have him come forward here with both arms. Now, some of you may not be able to do this. I don't know all the specifics about what's maybe going on with your shoulders, but some of you may not be able to hold this position. So one, I want to see if he can hold it. And then two, I want to see if he can hold it with resistance. So I'm going to have you hold it here and don't let me push you down. I'm going to do the other side as well. And then I want to ask him, do you have any pain with that? He doesn't have shoulder pain, so he's going to say no. You can relax your arms. But some of you might have pain with that. Now, what I want you to do right now is test yourself. See if you have pain in this area. So go ahead and bring both arms up. See if you can hold it first off just against gravity. And if that feels pretty good, whichever shoulder is involved, the painful one, I want you to take the opposite arm and put it on top and see if you can push up a little bit against that hand. If that's painful, then that means there's some involvement in the shoulder happening here because I'm testing these muscles in the front. So I'm testing the deltoid muscle here and a little bit of the bicep tendon here. So a lot of people who have that bicep tendon involvement will be painful here in this area with resistance. 
Okay, so now let's see if Brett can bring his arms out to the side. Good. And I'm gonna have him hold it here. So I want you guys to do this too. See if you can hold your hands out here to the side. So if you can, that's great. If not, no worries. Just go ahead and lower your hands back down. So I'm gonna give Brett a little bit of resistance here. It's kind of hard to do this one yourself at home. But while your arm is out there to the side, I want you to see if you can rotate your hand like you're dumping out a soda can mm -hmm, on both sides. See if you can hold that there. This is a really pr provocative position to the shoulder. The shoulder doesn't like this very much. Go ahead and lower the hands down. So that may be painful for you. Oftentimes when that motion is painful or even just you can't get your arms out to the side and hold them up, that's the supraspinatus tendon that we were talking about that goes down the side. So that tendon does this. It initiates the movement of what we call abduction or reaching out to the side. So it's really important because if you can't get that motion started, it's really hard for the other muscles to get that arm up in the air. So it's a really important rotator cuff muscle, even though it's small, okay? What I'm also gonna have him do is come here with his fists and hold tight, and I'm gonna push in and out either direction. This one you actually can do by yourself. So say my left arm was the one that was sore or painful, you're gonna take your arm here, you're gonna push out into one hand and push in into the other hand and see if either of those motions are painful. Okay, so I'm gonna have Brett do it here. Push out against me. Good, and then push in. Very good. So what I'm testing here is external and internal rotation, which is what the rotator cuff does. Um, two of them, or three really. So external rotation here for the infraspinatus and the teres minor, those are the ones in the back. And then internal rotation for the subscapularis muscle here in the front. So I wanna test both of those, plus the supraspinatus here, and I'm also gonna check the bicep. So all of those kind of tell me if there's any rotator cuff involvement. And the reason why the rotator cuff, you hear it so often is because those muscles are so small and overworked that they're often torn and they're often torn over time. So as we age, as we do more repetitive tasks, like if you do a lot of hammering or gardening or um, swimming or anything really that is a lot of stress to the shoulder, you can get tears over time. We call those degenerative tears. So, and those tears may start out really small. It may be just, you know, one day you slammed a heavy door too, too, too hard and that shoulder was kind of painful but then over time you didn't get it treated you didn't get it looked at maybe it got better for a time and then you went to do a axe throwing if you've seen those <laughs> that's the new fad the axe throwing you went axe throwing and it you aggravated it again and what happens over time is that those tears can just increase and get worse and worse now rotator cuff tears can heal which is why often we see referrals for those in physical therapy. When it's a partial tear, it's not like the muscles come off the bone, but it's just a small tear in the tendon that connects the muscle to the bone. Physical therapy can help with that. We can do things to promote blood flow to the area. We can do things to strengthen around the area and that tendon can heal. Now there are times when that tendon is completely torn, which means it's basically pulled itself off the bone. And in those cases, surgery is really necessary in order to get full function back of that tendon and of the shoulder. Sometimes if it's only one tendon that's completely torn, but the other ones are intact, we can strengthen around it and just kind of ignore that one small muscle that's torn and you can still function pretty well. But everybody's gonna be a little bit different and everyone's shoulder's gonna be a little different. So it depends on what's going on with your specific shoulder. So that's kind of how I would start with just a basic exam. Um, let me see here. I think my next PowerPoint was the exam, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stay on um, the video for a few minutes more. Okay, so the other thing that I wanna look at is his posture here. So when Brett is sitting, 
he probably doesn't sit like this all the time normally. What do you normally sit like, Brett? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's probably how some of you are sitting in your chairs right now. Um, so we all do this, right? Everything in life is forward. Eating is forward, brushing your teeth is forward, typing is forward, driving is forward. I mean, I could go on and on for a long time talking about all the activities that we do here. But what happens is then we do this here with our spines and our shoulders. And that takes a, a large toll on our backs, on our necks, and on our shoulders as well. So I want to assess his posture too. And most of the time when the patient comes in to the clinic, they don't know I'm looking for that yet. So you guys, if you come in, you'll have a heads up that I'm, you, you know, you're gonna be more like this, right? When you come in. Um, but most patients don't know. So what I do is I kind of assess how they're standing, how they're sitting when they first come into the room before I really get into their shoulder problems. Okay, so I'm looking at his posture here. It's pretty terrible. He's very rounded. He's very forward flexed and his pelvis is kind of tilted under him here. So I want to correct those things. And I want you guys to correct those things in the chairs you have here at home. So the first thing I'm gonna have him do is kind of roll his pelvis forward. So you're gonna take your pelvis, roll it forward. That's gonna help you sit up nice and tall. So you're not slouching here like a dog tucking its tail with a lot of flexion in the spine. You're rolling your pelvis forward and sitting up tall. The other thing you're doing here is squeezing the shoulder blades together. We call this scapular retraction, which isn't that important for you to know what the word or the term, but basically that's squeezing your shoulder blades together. So you're rolling your pelvis forward. I want you all to try this here in your chairs. Roll the pelvis forward, squeeze the shoulder blades together. That's good posture, but this is really hard to maintain. So I want you guys to try and do that in your chairs and see how many minutes you can hold that. We're gonna see how many minutes Brett can hold this too. It's 5.29, so we're gonna, we're gonna see. Here's your challenge, Brett. Okay, so this, this posture is really hard to hold because what happens when we're like this all the time is that the muscles in the back, those rhomboid muscles we were talking about, the rotator cuff muscles all in the back get really weak and stretched out when we're here all the time. So a lot of what we do in physical therapy is strengthening the muscles in the back posteriorly so that during the day you can maintain this upright posture. So your challenge is over in less than a minute because I need you to do something okay. else, Brett. Okay, so I, I want you to come here really bad posture again, kind of like how you were. So go ahead and lean back against, yeah. And now what I want you to do is lift both arms up overhead. Like straight, okay. Yep, just straight up. So you guys can try this at home too. So I want you to slump down, really bad posture, like you were probably in when this video started. I was too, okay? And then I want you to try and lift the arms up in the air and see how much harder that is. Now go ahead and bring the arms down. Sit up, like we talked about, rotating the pelvis forward, squeezing the shoulder blades, sitting up nice and tall, and now try and lift the arms up high. Do you feel the difference there? You should feel the difference. I feel the difference when I do it. So if I slump here, my arms only go this far, right? But if I sit up, my arms go all the way nice and high. So all we did there was adjust the spine. Now, we didn't adjust anything at the shoulder. You can bring your arms down, thank you. But the shoulder is going to do and act like the spine is doing and acting. So if the spine is forward, the shoulders are going to translate and move forward. If the spine is hunched and flexed like this, the shoulders are not going to be able to get that full extension that they would if the spine was in a good position. So posture is really important for reaching activities. You know, if you're trying to reach into the cabinet and you're like this standing in the kitchen, it's gonna be really hard and you're probably gonna get some pain on the very top of your shoulder. But if you can get into a better posture, that shoulder has more range of motion and more mobility in it to be able to get to that top shelf. So posture is a really important thing that we work on um, in physical therapy as well. Um, okay, let me go back to my PowerPoint. 
because I think I got a little ahead of myself here. So we did Brett's exam here. We looked at how he could move his shoulder. We looked at his posture, his strength. This is my little slide on posture that we talked about. Okay. So scapulohumeral rhythm is the next topic I have on here. This is a really big lengthy term, but basically we talked about this already with posture. It's the ability for your arm to move itself up overhead. But the, in addition to the posture and sitting up nice and tall, your shoulder blade also has to be moving. So a lot of us, um, I know before I went to PT school, I didn't really know what the shoulder blade was or what it did. I thought it was just kind of a bone that sat there. <laughs> um, but the shoulder blade's actually really, really important for being able to lift the arm up overhead. It's kind of a catalyst bone. It has a lot of muscle attachments to it, and the muscles act on that bone to be able to lift the arm up overhead. I don't know if this video will work. I haven't tried it in a while, but let's see. <laughs> okay. So this video, it goes a little fast, but it basically shows you that ball and socket joint here, lifting the arm up overhead. So this is the shoulder blade, the humerus, the ball and the socket. So what you notice here, I'm gonna pause it, is that this ball is rotating as the arm lifts, kind of like we talked about earlier. It needs to rotate in order for that arm to get overhead. Otherwise, it's just sliding up and pinching the top of the shoulder. So watch that ball as I play it this time. Oops, let me start it over. So watch that ball this time as it rotates. There we go, it rotates down and the arm goes up. So that's a really important feature. Now go ahead and watch the shoulder blade here and notice how it moves down and out as the arm moves up. So that shoulder blade is gonna go down and out and that arm moves up. So what happens with shoulder pain is that oftentimes the shoulder blade, oops, I'm sorry, lost my PowerPoint here. There's our video. Sorry guys. That was my email. <laughs> it doesn't have anything on it. We're okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, but how do I get there? I'm just going to let Brad do it. <laughs> oh, no, that's the YouTube video. Sorry guys, we have our um, Zoom controls blocking our, there it is. Is it? well, it's under, yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to tell you about how the scapula moves. It's really important for that bone to move. And a lot of times what happens with shoulder pain is that the muscles in the back that we talked about that are weak and stretched out, they often, prohibit that scapula from moving. So a lot of what I do in therapy is trying to get that shoulder blade to move so that you can get the arm up overhead more easily and you're not getting that pinchy pain at the top of the shoulder. Okay, so this slide just lists some common shoulder problems, most of which we've already talked about. We've talked about the rotator cuff tears. We've talked about the impingement, which is that pinchy pain on the top of the shoulder when you're not sitting up nice and tall and your shoulder blade isn't moving like it's supposed to. Um, tendinitis is just an inflammation in the tendons as the muscle connects into the bone that can also cause pain. Arthritis of the joint itself, which is just basically how our joints age. Arthritis is kind of like the body's gray hairs it's gonna be there, you know, past the age of about 30, everyone has some sort of arthritis, but depending on your activity level and, and how you've treated your shoulder and what kinds of things you've done in life, that arthritis may be more present or less present depending on the person, um, but that can cause a lot of issues in the, in the ball and socket joint itself. Um, 
instability we talked about when we were looking at the ligaments that surround the shoulder. So when you have labral tears or tears in the ligaments that hold that ball into the socket, that's when we start to get some instability. Instability can also be from weakness too of the muscles. If you have weak muscles, then you get a lot of grinding of the bone on bone and you don't get that smooth shoulder motion that everybody likes to see. Okay. I'm gonna, uh, we'll, we're gonna move into some exercises, but before I do that, does anyone have any questions for me? If you do, feel free to unmute yourself um, or you can type it in the chat box. I'd be happy to answer any burning questions. I know it's always hard on Zoom. If you were in person, it might be a little bit easier to get that interaction, but we're all dealing with Zoom these days, aren't we? <laughs> okay, if there are no burning questions, I'll go ahead and move on here. You know, hi, this is Lavi. Hi. Hi, can you see me? I can't get myself, my picture in. I there don't, I have a tear on the rotator cuff, but I don't uh, hurt on top of my shoulder. Mm -hmm. My pain is between my shoulder and the elbow, the muscle, the bicep muscle. Why uh -huh. is that? Why is that? Yeah, that's a great question. So the rotator cuff muscles, they're small and they kind of surround the shoulder joint, but they do refer pain down the arm. So just like we talked about that big upper trap muscle, the shoulder shrug muscle, right. it refers pain up into the head. Well, the rotator cuff muscles refer pain down into the arm and especially the bicep that does go down and connect into the elbow and all the way up into the shoulder. So if there's some, a tear in the bicep too, that often does cause a lot of pain down the arm. But I would say that's probably the most common complaint for a rotator cuff tear is pain down the arm, more so than that pinchy pain at the top. Right, it's not, it doesn't hurt at the top, but I, if I'm reaching out to just to pick up like salt and pepper shaker from the table or getting anything from the cabinet, mm -hmm. it hurts like heck. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You're right, it does. It's very uncomfortable. Um, and that's just that rotator cuff muscle referring pain down the arm. So when there's that tear there, it doesn't function and work like it's supposed to. So when that muscle does go to contract like it should, it's pulling on that torn area and it's causing inflammation and pain. So that's kind of what's going on with your shoulder when you're reaching out for things. So can that be fixed with therapy? Can it get better? Because I have problem with the bursa as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bursa yep. is the same. There is inflammation on bursa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bursitis is something else we see a lot that kind of coincides with the rotator cuff tear. Um, the bursa is kind of on the outside of the shoulder. Um, it has a lot of nerve endings in it, and it can be inflamed and cause more problems too. So the bursa kind of helps the tendon of the muscle glide. Um, and so a lot of times when you get a tear in the tendon and inflammation of the bursa, they just kind of, you know, make each other angry. You can go back and forth. Um, but it's definitely something that we treat a lot here in the clinic, especially okay. with partial tears like we talked about earlier when it's not completely torn off the bone. It's mm -hmm. just a small tear. Um, therapy can definitely help reduce the inflammation, help your shoulder move better, reduce pain, um, and that tendon can heal. And we use some other modalities, we call them, um, some other things in the clinic to help increase blood flow to that tendon. Um, we have an ultrasound machine that we use. We also have some laser therapy that we use to bring blood to that tendon because the rotator cuff muscles don't have very good blood flow and circulation. Right. So we want to get more blood to the area to help it heal. Okay. Um, so that's definitely something we treat a lot for sure. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we go to our exercises here? All right. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stay on the video. So the exercises we're going to do today, you were emailed, hopefully you got it, um, with the attached handout. 
So this handout is more specific to posture. Um, so not quite as specific to rotator cuff tears, but some of the exercises do address rotator cuff muscles. So the biggest thing with therapy and exercise is that we don't want to increase pain. A lot of people think, you know, no pain, no gain. Um, but really that's not true, especially for the shoulder because pain is going to increase inflammation um, and it's going to decrease your ability to function, to be able to reach and lift things at home. So we don't want to increase pain. Everything we do, we want to decrease pain. You may feel muscle fatigue and soreness, but that should be different than that, that sharp pain that you're feeling in the shoulder. So if you try some of these at home, make sure they're not painful. Um, and we tailor our exercises really individually here to each patient. So this is just a general handout for someone who wanted to work on posture but didn't really have a whole lot going on in the shoulder. So if you have a lot of pain in the shoulder, some of these exercises probably would not be good for you to do yet. Eventually, hopefully. Um, but some of them not yet. So if you try these, just beware. If it's painful, try, don't do it, um, lay off of it until we can get you in here and we can look at your shoulder and have more specific exercises for you. But I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what kind of exercises we do in here in general. Okay, so this, um, the first one is just a postural correction that we already talked about where he's going to Brett's gonna roll his pelvis forward and squeeze his shoulder blades back. Now, when he's in that good position here, he can do scapular retraction. This is a good one to do for people who have shoulder pain too, because your shoulder's not moving. It all comes in the shoulder blades in the back. So he's gonna relax his shoulders and then squeeze his shoulder blades together. So you should be able to feel that pinch of the shoulder blades together. So one thing you want to watch with this exercise is that your shoulders aren't shrugging. So a lot of people want to shrug the shoulders as they squeeze them back. You want to try and push the shoulders down towards the feet or the floor and then squeeze the shoulder blades together. All right, so that's a good exercise to do for posture. So you, that's this one here, the scapular retraction. You should be able to see the arrows kind of squeezing his shoulder blades together. Okay, let's go ahead and do some of the band exercises. So those ones will be on the very back here. So we use TheraBand a lot in the clinic. Let me go ahead and grab it, which is a stretchy resistance band. We sell them here. You can also get them at sporting goods stores or Amazon. Um, I'll have you face the camera and do adduction first. So one exercise for posture, now this is something that often irritates patients with shoulder pain. So this is something I would do for someone who needed postural correction, but their shoulders weren't super irritable. Their shoulders were okay in this forward and abducted position. So all he's doing here is taking that resistance band, pulling it all the way out to the side, and squeezing his shoulder blades. So he's going to get the same squeeze of the blades that he just got in the chair with the prior exercise. And he's also getting a stretch of these front muscles here. So all that forward stuff that we do all day long, this helps reverse that. This is a good exercise. Okay, let's go ahead and move into some extensions and rows. Um, we're gonna set it up here. We don't have the best setup where we are at the moment, so we're gonna set it up in the door. In the door frame. So this is actually how I would have my patients do it at home. They would take the TheraBand and they would tie a knot in the middle and yeah and throw it over the door frame. I'm gonna slide us over a little bit. So he's throwing the knot of the TheraBand up over the door frame. We actually have a little anchor that we use in the clinic but at home I just tell people tie a knot throw it over the top of the door frame, and now you have two handles that you can use. Our TheraBands have loops in them too, so that helps a little bit with grip. So what he's gonna do here, move you over a little bit more. What he's gonna do here, standing nice and tall, is he's just pulling that TheraBand down to his side, and again, squeezing his shoulder blades together. So making sure that he's not shrugging the shoulders, his shoulders are down towards the floor, and squeeze towards the back. 
also wanting to make sure that he's not really extending at the spine. So show them what it means if you extend a lot at the spine. So he's gonna really arch his back. So a lot of people do that when they are weak here. They try and get all the movement from their lower back, but that's gonna hurt your lower back. So we wanna watch that. Be really careful of that. Back stays still. Just the shoulder blades are squeezing here as the arms come down. So that's another good one to do for posture. Um, usually this exercise isn't aggravating for the shoulder unless there's a pretty severe tear and inflammation going on. Um, in that case, I would have him scoot very close to the door so he doesn't have very much resistance. And we would do a very light colored band, like a, a red. Um, we're using black so that you can see the band um, tonight, but we have lots of different colors of resistance. So black's actually pretty hard. <laughs> I'm making Brett work tonight. Okay, let's go ahead and move to a row. So I'm gonna have him move the band from the top of the door frame to the middle. So you take that knot, you'd stick it in the middle of the door frame and close the door. And you still have those two handles here. This door isn't the best. Do you want me to hold it? Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna hold it tight so it doesn't snap on him here. Um, so what he's gonna do is pull both arms back. Can you scoot this way a little bit? There you go. So he's gonna pull both arms back with bent elbows to his side. Same squeeze of the shoulder blades here. So he's using a little bit of his bicep muscle to pull the band with the bent elbow. So if there's a bicep tear, this may be a little aggravating. Um, but he's really focusing on posture, squeezing the shoulder blades together and working on all those posterior muscles in the back that have gotten weak because of his posture. Here. Okay, so that's another common one that we do. He's feeling it with that black band. <laughs> okay, um, so let's move on to a couple floor exercises. I'm going out of order, so I'm, I'm apologize about that. The ones we just did are the last three on the back page. Um, so we did all those three with the bands. So we're gonna move to the one where he's lying on his side here. So this is a, an exercise for the rotator cuff specifically. Um, let me adjust the camera here. I think that'll work. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna get behind him here. So this is an exercise for the rotator cuffs very specifically. We're working on the rotator cuff muscles in the back, the infraspinatus and the teres minor. Those are really important postural muscles as well. They help keep the shoulders back, but they also do this motion here. Or if you're throwing a baseball, this motion here, um, if you're putting on a seat belt, we use this a lot more than we think we do. I'm trying to think of what else we use this for. I think a seat belt is probably the best example I can think of at the moment. But um, all of those motions are what we call external rotation. So really important motion for the shoulder. Often really painful motion if you have a lot of inflammation and pain in the joint itself um, or a little tear too in those tendons. So we're actually gonna work the muscle here. We're gonna work it against gravity without any weight. As he gets stronger, I would add some weight, some little dumbbells um, for him to use. So one other thing I wanna grab before he starts. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> if we have any. Oh no, we can use the small ones. Yeah. Or I could just use the uh, lay on this thing. It's okay. <laughs> He gives them the idea. Okay, so this towel's really small. Normally I have a bigger towel, but this is the one I could find at the moment. So I'm gonna actually roll up a towel and stick it under his elbow. Sorry, that's not gonna do much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that way his shoulder is in a good position. It's in neutral here. Now what he's going to do is bring, make a fist and bring his fist up towards the ceiling and back down. That's all it is, up and down nice and slow. So if you have a tear in the rotator cuff or a lot of pain, this motion is probably painful for you to do. So I would not start you off the bat with this exercise. We would work up to it. We can also do this with the TheraBands, like this black band that we have been using. We can use a really light resistance band. We can do it in a way 
where the shoulder itself is not moving, but you're moving your body and still working the muscle. So there's, we can adapt this if this is painful. Um, but if it's not painful, this is a really good strengthening exercise for the rotator cuff and it helps with posture too. Okay, so that's that one. Um, the other one I wanted to show you on the floor was using a foam roll. And mostly I just wanted to show you what a foam roll was. Let me grab it here. Okay, so this is a foam roll. I'm gonna have Brett lay on this here. So foam rolls are wonderful for posture. We do a lot of things with these. Um, we can roll tight muscles on these foam rolls, but for you and for your shoulder, mainly it's for posture. Um, so what you're gonna do is sit on one end and then Brett's gonna lay back with his head on the other end. So he's gonna lay back onto this foam roll. This is a, a medium density foam. You can get them on Amazon or at sporting goods stores. It's about six centimeters, I believe, in diameter. Three feet long. Yeah, I would say so. Three, three and a half feet long. I'll have to measure it to get the exact dimensions. But um, there are different types and sizes of foam rolls, but this is the one I like to use. It's a little softer than some of the really, really hard ones. Um, and it's a little bit longer so that your whole body fits on the foam. So if Brett had a shoulder issue, let's say his right shoulder is really painful. And when he lies in this position and stretches his arms out to the side, both arms, let's say that this motion, though he feels a stretch here in the front, is painful for him. I'm gonna get a pillow here. And I'm just gonna bolst his arm up a little bit. So that prevents his shoulder from being behind him and it keeps his shoulder more straight out to the side. So this would be a more comfortable position if he had a lot of pain in that right shoulder. Okay, so what I'm gonna have him do is just lie here and stretch. This is gonna open up his thoracic spine, kind of like we talked about with posture when we're here all the time. It's gonna open up the spine, help really stretch out the vertebrae and all of those paraspinal muscles that run up and down the spine. So this is a great stretch to do. And we can do a lot of things from here, depending on how involved your shoulder is. If you're having minor pain and symptoms with some reaching activities, but generally speaking, you're strong and you have good mobility of your shoulder, then usually the foam roll isn't aggravating to you. And what I would have you do is some swimming. So I'm gonna have him go ahead and swim one arm after the other. Mm -hmm. So, oh, this one. The, yeah, this one. Okay. Just alternating. I said swimming and he really went for a swim. <laughs> so he's just gonna alternate one arm after the other and this really helps to emphasize that shoulder flexion, getting the arm up overhead while keeping the spine in an extended position. This is much harder to do when you're sitting and your spine is kind of rolled forward. So we want his spine stretched out and extended so that he can get more flexion in the joint. Okay. So there's some other things we do on here. We do some core exercises on here, which is really important for posture as well, being able to maintain that position all day long. Um, we can even do some TheraBand exercises on here. Let me just show them. Let's do horizontal abduction with the black band on the foam. So he can use his bear band on the foam as well, pulling straight out to the side. That's going to help work the muscles in the back, stretch the muscles in the front. He can do all of this while on a foam. And I could go on and on, but I would get really carried away. And it's almost six. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there with the exercises. Thank you, Brett. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit for us here. Okay, so just to kind of wrap up, let me go back to my PowerPoint, if I can. Maybe Brett should go back to my PowerPoint. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up here. We did our exercise demonstration. So a lot of people think with shoulder pain or really any pain in their body, won't it just go away over time? <laughs> but a lot of times that's not true because 
of poor posture, because the shoulder blade's not moving like it's supposed to, because of muscle weakness, because of repetitive activities that you're needing to do throughout the day. All of these things keep the pain from going away. It may go away from a time for a time, but it's gonna come back probably, or you're gonna do something to aggravate it. So really what's best is to get into the clinic and to get it treated so that your movement patterns are better, your posture is better, your strength is better, and you don't have to deal with this over and over and over again. These are just some common questions I put in here that people often ask. Um, so what you can do is you can call the clinic. We have the number and address on our handout that we emailed you. Um, some of you might be past patients. You may already have our phone number. Um, I put it here as well. So you can email me if you have more questions. Feel free to call our clinic. This is our address here. I'm at the West Hills location. We also have a West LA location if that's closer, more convenient for you. Um, we have some other great therapists there. So the best thing to do is really to get in, um, to get it treated and taken care of so that you don't have to deal with this for longer. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the screen share and come back. Does anyone have any questions for me about anything we've covered or that are um, specific to maybe what's going on with you? Give you a few minutes, I'm gonna get some water. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think I missed any questions in the chat box, but if you think of any, um, or if you're listening to the recording, feel free to email me um, or call our clinic if you have more questions. And hopefully I'll get to see you guys in here soon so that we can take care of whatever is going on. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate yeah, you guys. <laughs> Thanks. All right, you're so welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you, too.